Noah's Ark 7,000-year turnover event. 1. Noah's Ark also carrying animals on a voyage during a flood or diluvian narrative, as featured in the Bible, is a deliberate abstract that plays down or kind of covers up a period of at least 7,000 years of a well-prepared global and probably extremely challenging population turnover event. 2. This population turnover event went on for over 7,000 years instead of the in the Bible narrated 40 days. 3. Noah's Ark narrative seems to be used at the time as a kind of consensus between certain people, cultures, and religions, including Romans and Israelites, while the real event, apart from causing unprecedented challenges for the region and the world, also added up to a significant part of the actual global-scale civilization that we incompletely recognize today because we think civilization to have started in Mesopotamia as the cradle of civilization, while it in fact started in the Americas. 4. We hypothesize that tens of infrastructures or communities like Gobekli Tepe in so-called sister sites, with many of them in modern-day Turkey, represent the early or initial basis of this cradle of civilization, not far east of the also in the narrative mentioned Ararat Mountain, and can be linked to the in the narrative mentioned Noah's Ark, Noah's people needed to cross the Atlantic Ocean, that is merely a symbol for the fleets and waves of migrations that were needed, making use of the North Atlantic Current, in a roughly 40-day journey for the Ark as well as all ships, fleets and waves involved in a period of at least 7,000 years, roughly starting at the onset of the Younger Dryas. 5. It needs to be observed that there are other much earlier, often less recognized turnovers and consequent civilizations also originating in the Americas that are not the subject of this video and that are presented in other videos of this channel. 6. Gobekli Tepe and its sister sites present plenty of indications of a. Advanced transatlantic, non-compass, nor sextant-based mostly by unique stars and star constellation in combination with wind and birds observation based navigation. b. Hybridization. c. Artificial insemination. d. The overall American origin of all of this by means of artifacts, animal depictions, and symbolism. 7. Uruk's King Gilgamesh. The narrative of Noah and his Ark shows extreme spatial and temporal association with the perhaps historical Uruk's King Gilgamesh who would have lived about 2,700 years BC and built the city Uruk. 8. The Noah and Gilgamesh narratives present many temporal and spatial associations as well as the deluge, and could very well be one and the same, consequently confirmed narrative. 9. The extent of the Eurasian turnover and civilization is roughly illustrated by the Younger Dryas boundary. 10. The direction of the migration, invasion, and turnover is from the Americas to Eurasia and, out of the Americas, is executed by Amerindians with Amerindian genetics and genetic markers which consequently are the origin or ancestors exactly as the many scientific ancestral and migration markers, as well as archaeological artifacts, show us over and over. 11. These scientific markers are not sufficiently or not correctly recognized by consensus. That is also the reason why the new ancient DNA research by geneticist David Rye detected the genetics of Amerindians as well as their markers in a significant part of the DNA and genetics of modern-day Eurasians. 12. The Bible narrative does not mention the Amerindian origin, but better narrates the consequent civilization and further introduction and domestication of animals. 13. Apart from ancient DNA, also research involving genetic markers and haplogroups are yet again confirming and slowly pushing the discovery and recognition of the Amerindian origin by consensus. 14. In parallel with this narrative, religion, and science, a similar event and playing down took place earlier and also on continental scale in the rest of the world. This is roughly illustrated on the presented image, this time with also the Australasian boundary, incorrectly supposed to be a meteorite impact field or strewn field. 15. The Younger Dryas boundary field is related to the unrecognized expansion of the Amerindian Y-DNA haplogroup, R, from the Americas to Eurasia. It is described by geneticist David Rye as the Yamnair population turnover event, which appears and involves other names, Yamya, pit hole culture and many more. 16. The Australasian boundary field to extended Austronesian expansion and other similar expansions turnover events. As said, in both cases and in all sometimes much earlier cases the origin is Amerindian. One of these much earlier cases is the Austronesian expansion and its further expansions that is recognized to have been going on roughly 50 to 80,000 years ago. This makes that it can be easily confused with the out-of-Africa hypothesis of more or less the same period. 17. The Younger Dryas and Australasian boundaries are both composed of detected supposed abnormalities that some interpret as the result of a meteorite rain impact 
while the abnormalities are the result under the form of slacks from mining and metallurgical activities to produce agricultural tools, like axes and plows, as well as warfare by the same people that executed both turnover events leading to what we call civilizations. Both civilizations are of Amerindian origin and their descendants, with the so-called modern humans, today experience once again the same challenges, but this time our existence is under threat to the point of unprecedented extinction. 18. Most if not all challenges are caused or related to unsustainability of the practiced agricultural and economic activities, which are roughly the same as those that cause the unprecedented climate challenges that are attributed to the younger Dryas and narrated in religions, scriptures, and myths as floods or diluvium. Roughly the same activities cause our challenges and calamities today. 19. Roughly these civilizations today seem to be at war, while such war could be called a world war. If this war would further escalate it certainly would escalate the already present challenges and threats, possibly to the point of unprecedented extinction. 20. So both civilizations need to find common ground. Their most profound common ground is that they are both of Amerindians' origin and that sustainable lifestyle and activities are the only way out and the only way to existence, health and quality of life. 21. While religions and narratives sometimes feature rules to contain destruction of forests, the environment and climate, it is not the religions nor the narratives, but the Amerindian origin that clearly presented the sustainable lifestyle and activities now discovered through recent scientific progress including in ancient DNA genetics and Ladar. This progress, that is essential for an action plan for existence, is recognized too slowly and in cases held back by the slowly progressing existing consensus, independent if the consensus is based on religions or on Darwinism. 22. Both classes of consensus actually still present dogmas that most probably cause division where what is urgently needed for existence, quality of life and peace exactly is absence of dogma and union instead. 